we are in a very interesting phase, uh, I would say, of, uh, of uh, human uh, development. But in mobility, it could be argued to be even more interesting because we went from manpower, then to using animals, then to using a steam engine, then using the internal combustion engine. And now we are shifting to a, a full electrified world. My name is Lucas Di Grassi. I was born here in Sao Paulo, uh, Brazil, 30 years ago. I did all my studies here, together with my early go-kart uh, career, up to uh, economics uh, university, which I stopped to move to Europe to become a professional racing driver. Uh, I'm also a UN climate ambassador. I created different companies along my career. So it's very interesting that my life as a professional driver in 10 years, we went from few, full combustion to full electric, going from hybrid, and now we're even discussing autonomous vehicles. So it has been a massive shift in the past 10 years, arguably more than the past 100 years. And technology is evolving so fast that it's very hard to catch up with. So what does it mean for our day-to-day uh, -day life? It means that mobility will become cheaper, so people will be able to move more uh, with a lower price will become cleaner. And this will be done in, uh, in different ways. It will be a combination of factors, but micro-mobility will be definitely uh, coming along. Better public transportation. People don't know, but almost half of the pollution in dense urban areas comes from public transport because they run much more. They run for 20 hours a day or even 24 hours a day nonstop in proportion to the amount of vehicles they emit much more pollutants. So public transportation becoming fully electric is the first way to go uh, as well. And then for private individuals, people will buy less cars or cheaper cars. And whenever they need another form of mobility, they will rent or uh, if they need to go to travel with the family, there will, there will be a, a car that they will, can just unlock in their street. The main challenge of electric vehicles into one thing would be batteries. Batteries are the responsible for the range anxiety, for charge slowing charging times compared to fueling it up, and the amount of energy they hold. It's uh, almost 40 times less than fuels per weight. And then you need the infrastructure to support this transition from the commercial vehicles. But this is slightly easier because the commercial vehicles, especially public transportation, they are very predictable. They do the same route, they go the same place. So you could, for example, put contactless charges like you have in your phone today in the places which the buses, they stop to pick up people. Another important topic is that when the car become connected with the house and it's like a energy supply for the house. So in shortages, you could use your car to power your house for a few hours. Automation is uh, a very important topic. Automation will allow for safer vehicles. Autonomous cars, they are much faster, they are better. They don't need light to drive. They can drive at night, they can drive through fog. They don't get tired, they don't drink. They respect the speed limit. They will communicate with each other. So even scenarios that, for example, you have a person, uh, maybe a kid running the front of a bus that the other car cannot see the kid because the bus is there. But the bus will see the kid and will transmit the information to the car saying, look, there is a kid running at two meters per second here in front of the bus. The vehicle will know which lights will be open by the time they arrive there, so they don't need to stop at the light, you can just go through. Technology exists to make our life better, but if we're gonna end up in a worse place in the future, that piece of technology is not good enough. So sustainability is making sure that the technology or process or product actually is gonna create value for the population in the short term, but also in the very, very long term.